Welcome, one and all, to Pacific Forum 4 episode review. I am your host, Mike, and in this video, I'm going to talk about episode 5 of season 2 for Chucky. It was called Doll on Doll. Now, this episode picks back up at Incarnate Lore, where we see Buff Chuck versus Cream Puff Chuck, and there's a fight going on in Father Bryce's office. The doors are locked to the office, so Jake and Devin can't get inside. They hear a scuffling going all about between Good Chuck and Buff Chuck, or as I'm going to call him from here on out, Cream Puff. Buff Chuck is actually trying to talk some sense into his counterpart and tell him that you're evil and you shouldn't be a goody two-shoes. Well, Cream Puff Chuck doesn't feel the same way as buff chuck and buff chuck even brings out some knives that he has for each of the kids he has one for devin one for jake one for lexi the two of them in their fight end up throwing punches kicks to the groin and divine intervention gives cream puff chuck an epiphany where he decides that he's going to kick Buff Chuck in the groin and hang him at the cross, so to speak. So after the fight is over, Cream Puff Chuck comes out, goes up to Jake and says, how did I do, coach? Where you see Devin in disgust because while the whole fight was going on, Devin was upset that Jake was siding with Cream Puff Chuck because in Devin's mind, and he's right about this. It's all the same person. It's all Chucky. They're all capable of doing the same thing as the main man. So what ends up happening is Devin goes into Father Bryce's office as Jake leaves with Cream Puff Chuck. He sees Buff Chuck up against the closet door with two knives in each hand well they're actually poking through I should say and Devin ends up pulling the knives out of Buff Chuck to where Father Bryce walks in sees Devin with a knife in his hand and sends him to chapel because he's had about enough and before he even sends Devin the chapel, he ends up talking to Sister Ruth and Sister Catherine. And Sister Catherine is saying, well, maybe the kids aren't as bad as we're making them out to be, which Father Bryce doesn't want any part of that. And, of course, Devin is now in chapel. Meanwhile, you have Nadine and Lexi inside their room at Incarnate Lore, where they're trying to cover up the stench of Trevor's dead body. And of course, there's still blood on the floor. There's still blood on the blanket that they use to cover up the blood that was on the floor. And at one point, I'm going to go ahead and say this because this is a spoiler review. At one point, Trevor's body goes missing. And another plot point for this episode, while I'm talking about both Nadine and Lexi, is... Lexi's drug problem is almost getting the better of her. And there's a scene inside the bathroom where Nadine is able to talk Lexi out of taking any more drugs because she gives her a story about some gerbils that she had and how her mom let all the gerbils that she had out except for one and that one was able to stick around for a while until one day, even that one disappeared. Meanwhile, you have Devin inside the chapel. He's reading some sections of the Bible that Father Bryce recommended to him. And as he's going through the Bible, he sees parts of the Bible that he doesn't agree with and starts tearing them out. And he also has this plan that he wants Jake to be a part of, but Jake's too busy siding with Cream Puff Chuck and even baptizing him at one point in the episode to where 
Devin recruits Lexi on the search of where are these other Chuckies coming from? And also, where did Trevor's missing body go? So, Devin and Lexi at one point end up going into the woods where they see good guy doll heads on spears hanging in trees and you know all over the place and they come up to this cabin and they see the psychiatrist dr maydeen and inside this cabin you have the colonel the balls chuck and also inside this cabin, you have Andy. But that's not all that happened in this episode. There are other things that happened in this episode as well. I know I'm going all over the place, but I decided I was going to do the review in this particular way. The other thing that happens in this episode is we do have a scene between Tiffany and Jennifer Tilly. Now, Jennifer Tilly's soul in this series was transferred over to Tiffany's body, the doll body. And there's a scene where Tiffany goes into this room where Jennifer Tilly is being held in this birdcage. And Jennifer Tilly says, we're starting to run out of money. And Tiffany says, well, then you're just going to have to make sure that you help me out and getting these roles so I can still pass as you. Because one of the things that Tiffany needs Jennifer Tilly's help on is answering a question as to a past relationship that her sister Meg and herself were in when they were younger. Of course, there's some threats made by Tiffany to Jennifer Tilly, say, you won't get any more chocolate. And at one point, Meg Tilly ends up in the same room where she actually sees the doll that was once Tiffany and is now Jennifer Tilly. And Meg is shocked to know that it is her sister inside that doll and that Tiffany Valentine is actually posing as Jennifer Tilly. And long story short, Jennifer Tilly kills Meg Tilly, but we all know that it's Tiffany Valentine. And then there's a scene where it's Glenn and Tiffany leaving in a car. And in the back seat, you see Jennifer Tilly inside the Tiffany doll. Of course, there's another little catch to this episode. They bring out Glenn's original doll body. And Glenn realizes why she doesn't feel whole. So what ends up happening is Tiffany sets fire to Jennifer Tilly's mansion. And they leave in a car in search of both Glenda, in search of Nika. And, of course, they're going to encounter Kyle as well. Now... As far as what I thought of this episode, I thought this episode was a little bit better than the last two episodes, episode three and episode four, but not by much. It definitely had some funny moments, especially with Cream Puff Chuck interacting with the kids and also being baptized. But it also had some moments where you're thinking, wow, Jennifer Tilly is acting when she's Tiffany possessing her own body it isn't very good but then it's real good when she's voicing herself and it's coming out of the tiffany doll so you know it was one of those things and of course the fight between buff chuck and cream puff chuck was silly of course but that's what you expect and then of course there's tensions between Devin and jake especially with with what's going on with cream puff chuck but it, it was a little better this episode was a little better because it had chucky in it for the most part it had Devin, jake and lexi in it as it should and we also got a clue as to andy's whereabouts 
But Andy, he's not looking so good. But he is alive. That is a spoiler. So if I were to give this episode a rating, this might sound a little generous, but it's 2.9 out of 5. And there were still some scenes that I had an issue with, like Devin tearing some pages out of the Bible. I had an issue with that, but if I put it into story context, you know, that could somewhat be forgiven, but not completely. And also the fact that Nadine was able to calm Lexi down so quickly and instantly get rid of Lexi's drug habit. I don't think it's completely gone, but you know, there were some silly parts and yes, the fact that Cream Puff Chuck was being baptized, I did think that was silly because I have a feeling that Cream Puff Chuck is going to revert back to his previous ways. So again, it's a 2.9 out of 5. If you want to say 3, it, it's barely a 3. But overall, this was a better episode than the last two, and I'll take what I can get. So, this has been Mike for Pacific 4 and 4 episode review, reviewing Chucky Season 2, Episode 5, Doll on Doll. If you like what you saw here, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like what you saw here, give it a thumbs down. Leave a comment in the comment section below and share this video with your friends. Thank you. And have yourselves a great day. <laughs> <laughs>